You know, any day you're buying a bus, it's a good day. Or the start of many bad days. I don't know. It depends on the bus. And today is one of those days because, my friends, we are going down to Colorado Springs, 60 miles away, to pick up that bus. It's a 1993 Thomas front engine, flat front, with the Cummins 5.9 liter 12 valve. So it's all mechanical and it only has 109,000 miles. To make it sweeter, we already had an oil analysis done and all of the wear metals for the engine came back super duper low. The bus has no rust, it's luggage bays, and it's only 33 feet long. So it's an awesome conversion platform and it's already got the high roof option. So if you don't want to do a roof raise, why not? We're going to pick it up, tune it up, get it caught up on maintenance, and then send it on its way. But stay tuned and let's see if we can take this bus that we just bought sight unseen and drive it 60 miles back to our shop. Thanks for watching. Okay, we're in the car. I got Ben. <laughs> He's playing chauffeur. Um, before we get down there, I thought people would be interested to know what someone like me brings to pick up a bus like this. And so I'm gonna root around in my bag and show you um, kind of my favorite tools to bring, you know, if you're not gonna bring all of them when you're going to pick up a bus. All right, so we're just gonna start with whatever's on top. And this stuff is awesome. This is called, I think like self-adhering -adhe tape or self, uh, what's the word? You know what I'm talking about? Uh -huh. It's this like rubbery silicone tape. This stuff here, you can buy it in rolls, obviously, and it's this like kind of rubbery compound, and you tape it tight around something and it actually fuses to itself. So if you've got to repair anything that's, you know, relatively low pressure that's leaking, this stuff is awesome. You got radiator hoses, fuel hoses, it's a little expensive, but it's pretty magical. Gotta have a pair of gloves. Um, I've got a set of uh, just regular old ranches. Um, vice grips are great not only for, you know, grabbing on to uh, nuts and things like that, but they can also double as a clamp if you need to hold something. Um, I bring a strap wrench with me in case you need to pull a filter off. Uh, I got a spool of this um, purple wire <laughs> in case you need purple wire. It's important. I like purple is the most useful color to me. Um, I just happen to have two multimeters in here. I don't even know if they both work. That one does. Super useful for troubleshooting electrical issues, but because this bus has no computers, I'm really banking on us not needing them. Um, you gotta bring some bailing wire. This stuff is, you know, obviously amazing. Um, I've got a cheap little uh, socket wrench set. Also, bring some hose clamps. Um, I've got a whole assortment of hose clamps in here. Um, they're super useful. I had a leaking fuel line once, and it was a, a relatively high pressure fuel line, and I was able to cut the finger off of a rubber glove and clamp it over the split in the fuel line, and uh, and that ha that's still holding on that bus. Go figure. Uh, <laughs> and then I've got some zip ties here, and I think that's about all a guy really needs. More hose clamps. Obviously, some screwdrivers are floating around. Um, where did I? I thought I saw something. Oh, and of course, uh, an adjustable wrench in case there's any. Um, nuts that you need to strip. I also like to bring a little assortment of wire nuts and butt connectors. I like wire nuts because, um, you know, in a, an emergency, you can really do some inappropriate things with them as far as combining lots of different wires or different gauges if that's what you need. Um, and of course, a couple of rags. So, it's an odd jumble, but I've taken this bag with me to many many bus pickups and usually always have what I need. If I wasn't sure if this bus was going to start, I would bring some starter fluid, um, but I've got video of the bus running, so I'm not bringing any starter fluid with me. There you go. Here we go. 
Hey, we're here. Look, that was great. We made it. <laughs> Spent 50 minutes on the phone with Progressive to get insurance going. Don't wait until the day of to do that. But look, there it is. We're here. They're picking it up. They already got it running for us, which I kind of hate that they did that, but at least you don't have to worry about getting it running. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I'm going to be looking for. Make sure it's safe. And then we're going to hit the road so we can go eat some lunch. I'm hungry already. And we got a ways to go. Okay, well, I was just talking to the mechanic here uh, who is also the bus driver. This is a construction company and they were using it to move employees to job sites. And uh, he, <laughs> he was like telling me how great of a bus this was and how good of a deal we got on it and how much he likes it. And the guy was nice enough. They already topped up and checked all the fluids on the bus. And uh, he said the thing's in great shape and it's got no issues, so I'm just feeling like we did really well for ourselves. I mean, it's clean. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you all the things that I like to check still anyways, even though at this point they've already been checked. And, um, and then we'll hit the road, and uh, I'm expecting a pretty easy trip, knock on wood, but this thing's already got like a, almost a full tank of fuel. Um, the tires all look fine, so let's get in here. We'll start on the outside like we like to and work our way in and hit the road. Okay, so the first thing I always like to check is the condition of the tires, and these guys are looking actually really nice. I don't see any cracking. I mean, gobs of tread. Gobs of tread left. So, very pleased about that. Let's see if we can find a date code on here somewhere. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I'm not seeing it on this tire. So the date code is only ever on one side of the tire, so you might not see it right away if it's on the inside of the tire. These are Toyos and then they, they, they uh, are matching tires, so that's, that's a good sign. So I'm not seeing a date code. It's probably on the inside of the tire, but look at all the tread here. And since we're under, Okay, we're gonna come around and check the back tires. We got some uh, Michelin XZEs. These have a little bit of sun checking on them. Um, they're back tires, so I'm not concerned really about my safety or anything for the ride home. I don't see a date code, but we're probably gonna wanna address these before we do anything else with the bus. It's got a big rear mounted fuel tank. That's actually one of my favorite setups because it keeps the weight in the back. And it doesn't take away places where you can mount your freshwater and gray water tanks. Yeah, same story on these tires. And I'm not seeing date codes on these because they're probably on the inside. But the bus is very clean. I mean, that's the exhaust. No smoke at all. We got our tank drains here. I'm not seeing any moisture coming out. That's great. So they must be draining it. See what the battery looks like. So you got two little guys. Oh, well, these are just put in in February. That's and they're caterpillar batteries. Those are probably the most expensive batteries you can get. Holy smokes. The gal working the front desk said this company takes really good care of all their equipment, and I don't think she was pulling one over on us. Um, but we'll go ahead and go inside. And um, let's see 
So when you start up a, a, a bus like this, you want to make sure that you're getting good oil pressure. Um, you know, we haven't got on the road yet, so we'll check our water temperature. Those are the two most critical things um, that you want to keep an eye on. This bus has air brakes. I'm not going to get into a whole air brake test, but um, you definitely want to make sure that you're building adequate air pressure. Um, look at the mileage, only 109,000 miles, and what's even more impressive is the hours, 52. 5280, hey, it's a mile. Um, so the next thing we're gonna check, we're gonna pop this open and take a look at the fluids. I'm not gonna check them because our guy Andy already did, but I'll show you where you would. Thank you, Ben. Wow, that's clean. It just sounds good. So anyway, um, on these Cummins, you're gonna wanna look for a little tan dipstick somewhere. Where is that guy? It's usually over here. You see it? computer so you can run them even uh, even when it doesn't want it look at this bus I think I'm just falling in love because I think it's got a dipstick out here look at that so engine oil transmission fluid and then I think I saw yeah this is actually the cap for adding more oil to the engine and then you got your uh, coolant here it's pretty amazing it looks like maybe we're a little low on coolant to the side glass so maybe we'll pick up just some coolant or something on our way out of town. I like that setup though. Oh yeah, and your air filter restriction. I don't know if it's showing up here. There you go. A little bit of restriction, but we're planning on a full service of all the fluids anyway, so. Amazing. We're going over the gauges here, and uh, the voltmeter is showing right at 12 volts. And you never know on these old buses if the gauges are accurate and can be trusted. So we're actually going to go, 12 volts is a little on the low side, so I just want to know if this alternator is charging. We might have to replace the alternator or something, so Ben's going to check the voltage back here, see? And look, we got 13.1, which I bet if I rev the engine up, that'll probably go up even higher, but that means that we're at least getting a charge. Whereas if you were to just trust the gauge inside, you might think you're not getting a charge. And if we're not getting a charge, that would make me hesitant to turn off the bus. If you know what I'm saying. So that's good news. Yeah, do you want to do it? Do you wanna yeah, I'm going to rev it up a little bit and we'll see what Ben gets. But 13.1 at idle is plenty good. Apologize for all the noise, folks, but this is just the nature of the beast here. <laughs> I'm gonna, we got Ben back there. Let's see what he's getting. Yeah, we're up to 13.6. Up to 13.6, okay. So we're looking good. Go. All right, well, I think we're feeling pretty amazing about this. We just, we just ran into some other dude who works here. And, like Everybody knew about this bus and knew it was being sold and couldn't believe well, the deal that we got on it, and also they just had nothing but good things to say about the bus. Yeah, it's really nice. <laughs> so anyway, I think I'm gonna get behind the wheel and we're just gonna start rolling and we'll keep an eye on the gauges and things in the beginning and make sure that everything's looking good. But uh, I'm very optimistic about a smooth trip home. So, uh... All right, I almost forgot one thing, which is gonna be uh, doing a light check. So I got Ben back there. All right, brakes. We got brakes. We need left-hand turn signals. They're good. <laughs> we need your right-hand turn signals. Oh, where'd he go? Where is he? We're good there. We got brakes. Oh, I guess I'll do reverse. We got reverse. Um, and then we'll do lights. 
You got lights, okay. Do left turnies. We got right turnies. Headlights. I think we're legal. I think all the lights are working. <laughs> it's, it's like we never, never happened. <laughs> oh my God, I'm happier than a pig and shit. Okay, so we're gonna get out of here. Oh, and we figured out too why the voltage is reading low. This bus actually has um, air conditioning units up there and they were on and so we turned them off and uh, that voltage is starting to creep back up. So um, yeah, everything's, everything's coming up roses. So we're gonna get out of here. I'm not gonna film and drive, we'll catch you later. Well, just to fill you in on what's going on, I'm going real slow. <laughs> so we know this bus sat for a while and um, I think there was some sediment in the fuel tank because you can hear the turbo going in and out. Oh, here comes the power. Some power's coming and going, and uh, we're fairly positive it's a clog in the fuel filter. So we've topped it up with fresh diesel just to make sure that the gauge was accurate, and the gauge is accurate. But we're on our way. We're limping to a Napa. We're going to spin on a new fuel filter, and uh, I'm really confident that's going to make it work. But if you're ever experiencing low power, especially that kind of comes and goes in waves and all of your other symptoms are good, uh, it's probably your fuel filter. So, not to worry, but a pain in the butt, that's for sure. Okay, so, <laughs> I couldn't film all of that because I was busy not dying, but we, um, Ben ran ahead in the chase car up to uh, the Napa while I kept on trucking on the back roads. Only stalled twice, you know? I think maybe had 20 cars max behind me at one point. Um, they were bad. They were bad, yeah. People were pissed. <laughs> Whatever. Um, we got a new secondary or primary, depending on how you think of it, fuel filter. This bus, someone put an inline fuel filter in it. It's not clear if that's our problem or not. But uh, we also picked up, you know, when you swap the filter, you gotta pre-fill it with fuel. Well, um, we got one better. We got, it's our favorite libation, Diesel Perch by Liquid Molly. This is a cherry flavor. This is, yeah, we like the cherry flavor. So one for us, one for the bus. Um, now we, we are gonna pre-fill the filter with this stuff. And this is an amazing product. It really does clean up the injectors, the injection pump, lubricates things. Um, so there's no harm in using this and it's better than trying to go salvage or scavenge some diesel and put that in the filter. So you saw I had that filter wrench with me earlier in my toolkit. Well, that's just for situations like this. So we're gonna pull this filter off, fill it with these, put a new one, fill it with diesel purge, stick it in there, uh, and then maybe just keep heading toward Napa and see if that fixes it. If it doesn't fix it, when we get to Napa, we'll see the, the, the filter that was added doesn't have a number on it, so we don't have a way without pulling it off and letting him look at it, I guess, to see. And that one's a little more scary. This one's easy. That one's a little more scary, but. I vote to delete the other inline fuel filter. Yeah, Ben just wants to get rid of it. I'm, I'm sympathetic to that. I mean, why filter your fuel at all? Yeah, why even filter it? I mean, you put a filter in, it clogs, and then you can't get fuel in your What's system. What's the point, you know? Give me dirty fuel or give me death. Anyway, I'm gonna put on my gloves, loosen that filter, take it out, we'll top this guy, do the thing. Um, well, you'll see what happens. I have no idea what's gonna happen. Okay, so it's kind of, you know, the random shit that was in that bag, it's been honed over the years to this beautiful assortment. So our fuel filter is this red canister here and the strap wrench will fit on that, as you can see. And then I've got my uh, ratchet that'll fit into that. And then I brought this extension because you never know if you're gonna be able to get your ratchet down on the filter or not. So you're about to see how this goes. Okay, so we're gonna throw our gloves on. And um, these 12 valve Cummins, I'm really grateful that, you know, it, this engine, has uh, no computer, as I've said a thousand times before. So when you have these kinds of issues, you're not wondering if it's an electrical thing, a computer thing, a sensor thing, you know? Let me think. It's righty tidy, but it's upside down, so righty loosey. I think that's the way. I always get confused on that. So this strap wrench, you're gonna see it in action. If you haven't watched my uh, favorite tools video, you should take a look because that'll explain why 
why I even have this because it's so freaking useful. Let's see if I need that extension or not. Ugh. Am I am I doing it the right way? No, I'm doing it the wrong way. That's what I'm doing. I'm too excited. I'm like doing roadside bus repairs, making a YouTube video, hanging out with my best friend, hoping that this solves our problem. I mean, the emotions are, they're running high, you know, they're just, I probably just tightened it so much it's not going to come off. <laughs> Good lord. But it's going, it's going, I don't know if you can see it spinning, but it's, everyone with a bus should have a strap wrench because it's one wrench and it'll fit all your favorite filters, your oil, anything round. Now there are other causes we should talk about. If it's not the fuel filter, what else could it be? So this does fit all the criteria of a classic fuel filter problem, I will say, but um, it could be the lift pump, which is what pumps the fuel through the filter to the injection pump. It could be that, or it could also be, well, I guess it could be the injection pump, or, um, but that's, you know, that's about all. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab the new filter. New filter has a box, which is a very convenient way to hold the old filter. Once you take it off. Drop this down. Hopefully we can get it out without making a big mess. Been a while since I've had to do some roadside repairs on a bus. It's it's good, you know, you gotta stay sharp, practice your skills, or you go soft. And uh, forget what you're doing. There's lots of threads on that guy. Huh? <laughs> So I guess this is suddenly also a tutorial on changing fuel filters on a 12 valve Cummins. Go figure, huh? Holy shit, how many threads do they put on these things? Oh my god. There we go. Oh, it looks like I threaded the thing out of the housing. <laughs> this actually goes in the uh, filter housing, so. Oh, and it comes with a new, new filter, comes with a new little ring. Lovely. All right, so there's that. Um, so, we're just gonna see what we get. I have a feeling that, that that filter maybe isn't the problem, but we really do have to just, you know, start somewhere. And uh, that's the easiest thing certainly could be the problem. It's too bad someone decided down the road to uh, modify that and put in a uh, sort of aftermarket filter situation. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab that guy back on there. I'm gonna maybe swap that over in the first to that's a good idea. Oops. <sighs> The diesel engines are very sensitive to fuel filters um, in a way that, I mean, all engines are, but um, because there's always like, at least on these older ones, there's like a return line for the diesel. Um, you know, these engines, they actually go through a lot of diesel. They pump it all through the system and then they're putting it back into the tank through the return line. So, um, you know, a lot of times, what's gonna happen is you're gonna actually be cycling through your tank and fuel is gonna run through the engine many times over uh, before. There we go. Before you have a chance, you know, like not quite in the gas engine. Fuel's just gonna go through it, get burned. There we go. So we're gonna fill this up with diesel purge. 
another nice thing to do regardless. And you gotta pre-fill these filters or you will do a thing called losing your prime. That's not good. Filled up. Set this guy in there. I don't think I've even spilled a drop yet. That's awesome. Outstanding. So this is a nice advantage of having a front engine bus. Go over anywhere to do a little maintenance. Yeah, you're protected nobody, from the elements. Nobody's the wiser. No one knows that we're, you know, dealing with a potential breakdown. Nobody. All right. I'm gonna throw my little wrench on there just to give it a, another, I don't know, quarter or half. We'll do a half turn. And then uh, we're gonna fire it up and give it, um, maybe let it idle, high idle for three seconds to a minute just to make sure any air bubbles get through the system before we get back on the street. And then we'll keep on heading to Napa. And we're gonna see. Oops. <laughs> we're gonna see if Bob's your auntie. Is that the same? Bob's your auntie. Second quarter. I think. You know, like if one's good, three is. Okay, that's nice. Snug. Okay, look at that. I feel like that was pretty quick. Pretty quick. Pretty clean. We're gonna fire it up and woo, see how we done. All right, so some buses or diesel engines have ways of repriming the system. Um, this does have a prime pump, but I'm, I don't think we're gonna have to use it because in theory, we didn't really lose any fuel. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of accelerator pedal and start it up and hopefully we fire it off. Here we go. Oh. oh, yeah, smooths right out when that purge gets in there. <laughs> ben just smirked at me, he didn't get to see it. So we're gonna, I'm gonna sit here and let it work through any air bubbles that it might have. We'll give it about a minute. It sounds the same. It always sounded good. It just was losing power uh, under high load high fuel demand situation, so. We are half a mile from the Napa, so we're gonna go to Napa, that'll be our test run. If it appears to drive all right, then uh, we're actually gonna get on the interstate and see how we do. <laughs> it's so good, this is good TV, right? Uh, sounds great though. I'm digging it, I think we're good to hit the road. All right, well, we're at the Napa. I guess I probably don't have to tell you it's a little better but we're still having that issue so I think it's time to figure out how to get rid of this extra fuel filter because uh, it seems like that's probably our problem so stand by okay we we took a good look at it Ben and I we both looked at we it looked at it <laughs> it's an we, awesome thing we surmised we hypothesized um, so someone added an inline fuel filter, like a middle metal canister that has the two little nipples on the end. And um, we don't know if that's the issue, but that's the most likely culprit. But whoever did that, God bless their heart, to put the hose clamps in such a configuration that we don't have the tools with us to pull them off. And the engine's hot and it's really hard to work on at the moment. So we've got about 30 miles to go. Which we've already done 30 miles, so. Yeah. It's getting there. It's getting there. It's, it doesn't seem to be getting worse. So we are just gonna go for it. Um, you know. Get it back to the shop. Get it back to the shop, and then from there we can do a proper diagnosis. I think at this point in time, our current plan will be to just delete that fuel filter that they added and add, just do a new fuel line all the way to the tank so that that's not an issue because it's a suction line, so if you have any pinhole leaks or something, it could be sucking in air, which is also a hypothesis that we have. 
Um, the lift pump could be bad, but I've never had one go bad. It's like a mechanical thing. If it goes bad, it goes bad. So, uh... There could be a clog in the line. Yeah, there could be a clog. And <clears throat> this bus is really dirty. It, like, sat in a field, so we think that maybe there's some dirt in the tank. And so we can check all this stuff once we get to the shop. We just got to get back to the shop. On the plus side, it's rush hour, which means the interstate will be slow. Um, and I think there's no construction between here and the shop. So, no narrow lanes, hopefully a shoulder. They don't have been behind me. So, I'm not going to be filming much of this because it's dangerous to drive an impaired vehicle on the highway. So, hopefully the next video is us at the shop and not us broken down somewhere. Alright? See you back at the shop. <laughs> well, I know I said I wasn't going to film while I was driving because it's dangerous. But, I'm stuck in rush hour traffic. I'm going five miles an hour. But the good news is, I think we're 90% of the way fixed, and I I have my suspicion that the issue, it, well that filter might have been clogged, but we tightened up some clamps that we could just barely get to, and I think we actually do have an air leak that's sucking air into our fuel, uh, which that'll wreck your power, and it, it reminds me of when I did uh, some veggie oil conversions, you know, this is a symptom of having an air leak, so. Uh, but yeah, I was pulling 60, 65 miles an hour, but you know, after sustaining that for a while, I would hear the turbo kind of wind down and I could feel a, lot, a slight loss of power, nothing like before though. So I think what we're going to end up doing is actually just running new fuel line from the tank up to that lift pump and deleting that extra filter. It doesn't need to be there. And uh, that'll solve all these issues. I'm so happy with how this runs otherwise. I'll go over it with you more when I get to the shop, but just a little update since I'm stuck in traffic going 10 miles an hour. Mission accomplished. I'm so happy. <laughs> I know we had our trials and tribulations, but I really think it's an, an air leak into the fuel system because of that janky uh, fuel filter that they installed in there. So we're gonna run a whole new line from the tank to the front with new nylon tubing, just like it had stock, and we're gonna delete that fuel filter. Um, some awesome things I just wanna give you. I never really explained like why I got so excited about this bus. So it's got low miles, it's an all mechanical Cummins 12 valve, it's rust free, it's filthy because it's been sitting out, um, low miles, low hours, got it from a place that they are a heavy machinery contractor, so they have their own shop that service this thing. So it's up on all the service aside from the fact that it's been sitting for a little while. Uh, the whole drive back, the, thermos, the thermostat and therm thermometer never went above 180 degrees, which is amazing. The transmission, which is the weakest link on this bus, it's only an AT545. Um, it shifts awesome. No slippage. feels very solid, so we're just going to change out the fluid, convert it to synthetic, fully service it. Might install a temperature gauge, we'll see. Um, we already did the fuel filter, so that's great. We'll do an oil change, oil filter, flush the coolant. It's already got new batteries, so we don't have to do that. We're gonna probably get um, some recap tires for the back. Power wash the whole thing, because it needs it so bad. And um, yeah, I think, I think this thing will be like ready for whatever's next in its life. I might do, if we're feeling cheeky, I might go ahead and take the fuel plate off the injection pump and grind a different profile on there. 
Um, if you don't know these Cummins, all mechanical Cummins, you can turn up the horsepower by changing the profile on the fuel plate. So it's, you know, you can take it out, grind a new profile or buy one that's pre-ground, costs you 150 bucks. Doesn't take very long, you'll pick up a lot of horsepower. If we do that, I'll probably also add a pyrometer or an EGT exhaust gas temperature gauge uh, so that you don't melt the engine. <laughs> the only other thing I might consider adding is a transmission temperature gauge because it's the AT545, but this isn't a 40 foot bus, it's only 32 feet long. Um, so, you know, does it really need it? I'm not sure. Um, but it's a great bus. I love that we've got the big old storage bays over here and the body, the body is just, it's really straight and the paint's faded, but like, I don't mind that the paint is faded because if you're gonna scuff it to prime and paint it a new color, which people probably are, it's actually easier when the paint's kind of faded and crappy. Um, we got a park next to, you might think that's my bus, but that's actually not. I haven't even done a video about that bus. During the past two months, we've bought a whole nother bus I didn't document, shame on me, gutted, did a roof raise, and insulated the floor. <laughs> and uh, I think we've already sold that bus, but I'm gonna do a video on it before we sell it. So anyway, I hope, uh, gosh, I, I hope that that was like somewhat informative, at the very least a little bit entertaining. Um, you know, what it's like picking up a, a new to you bus, sight unseen from an auction house. And um, thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it a lot. And uh, you know, my goal is to just share this knowledge with you and share some of the weird things I do with my life with all the people out there in the YouTube. So thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And um, why don't you check out some of the other videos I have? Like, I'll put them here and here. See if you continue to enjoy my time shared with you. Have an excellent week, day. We'll see you next time. That one? You're on. I can see the red light. Oh, okay. Here we go. I got that dodge. I got that dodge. Look at that dodge.